Hey everybody, Saul here. I have only one rule here. If it's animated, I'll comment on it. And tomorrow is the most dark of days, the most sinister of spans, the eeriest of epochs. It's motherfucking Halloween! And man, am I glad that this review comes out today and not tomorrow night, because that means I still have time to go demand candy from strangers and scare the shit out of kids and take a nice, quiet, relaxing stroll in the dead of the night down a foggy road in a costume and just have a grand old time. Motherfucking Halloween, man. Nothing compares. And what better way to end off Saul's spooky Halloween than a look at the most classic Halloween movie of all time? You know what I'm talking about. The Nightmare Before Christmas. Now it's time for another look into Saul's infinite knowledge, I would say. Hmm, yes, indeed. Alright. So, The Nightmare Before Christmas began life as a poem written by Tim Burton in 1982 while he was still working as an animator at Disney. The idea kept resurfacing over the years until eventually the poem was adapted into a full-length stop-motion feature directed by Henry Selleck, produced by Burton himself, and originally released in 1993 under Disney's Touchstone property, as Disney feared the movie was too dark and scary for their target audience. Oh yeah, because we were all spineless little shits back then. Give me a break. Ow. Now then, it's time. Time to dim the lights. Grab the candy, light the candles, skin the orphans, and take a nice, deep, spooky look at the Nightmare Before Christmas. The plot of this movie is as classic as they come, I reckon. Jack Skellington, the Pumpkin King, makes his name scaring the living shit out of the inhabitants of Halloween Town every Halloween. However, Jack feels stagnated by the constant screams and shrieks, and longs for something new, something beyond the scares of Halloween. And holy shit does he get his wish! Because Jack accidentally stumbles onto another holiday-themed world, Christmas Town, where everything is happy, warm, and designed by Dr. Seuss. Feeling curious and elated, Jack brings Christmas to Halloween Town, but gets carried away when he decides to take Christmas into his own bony hands. The thing about this plot that's so great is that you can view it either as a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie. You wouldn't be wrong either way, and that's a pretty rare gambit for a movie to pull off with such finesse. Though, personally, I do consider it more as a Halloween movie than a Christmas movie, since the focus is making a scary Christmas, not a sweet Halloween. But anyway, let's move on to those petrifying performers, the characters. Jack Skellington is the famous, beloved Pumpkin King who brings chills and thrills year after year to the citizens of Halloween Town. But, like a Disney princess, he longs for so much more in his life. Though, unlike a Disney princess who just wants more because they haven't done anything with their lives, Jack wants more because he finds the scares of Halloween and become dull. When he finds Christmas Town and has a good sing about it, he decides that that's what's missing in his life and becomes obsessed with unraveling the Christmas enigma. There's something incredibly charming about Jack, but it's hard to say exactly what. Maybe it's because he possesses a passion for his work that many of us can vicariously leech off of, or maybe it's because lots of us can sympathize with Jack's dilemma of wanting to share his passion with the world only to be misunderstood. I think Jack is a character whom everyone sees something different in, but none of it's bad. The reason I like him, personally, is just how innocent he is, in that he shows a fascination with the world he has discovered, but nobody really gets the depth of his passion, which is something I can relate to 100%. Well, whatever your reasons for liking him, there's no denying that Jack is a splendidly sweet skeleton. Now, after Jack, there's Sally, a Frankenstein's monster-like ragdoll who crushes on Jack hard. After she has a vision about Jack's Christmas going up in flames, Sally tries to dissuade Jack from delivering presents, but her warnings fall on deaf ears. Or they would if Jack had any ears. Sally is a character you either remember or you don't. I think her design far outweighs her personality, but she's another character who everyone has something they like about her. And that's fine with me, but in my eyes, I don't see a whole lot to love. Then you've got the jazziest villain around, Mr. Oogie Boogie, a gambling loving sack of bugs who does... Um... Yeah, to be perfectly frank, I don't know what Oogie is supposed to be doing as a villain. He kind of just sits around, waiting for the plot to fall into his lap. He doesn't even make an appearance until the last third of the movie. I guess he just enjoys the fun of tormenting people, but if Jack hadn't asked those three little shits lock, shock, and barrel for help, Oogie wouldn't have even made an appearance. But you know what? Oogie's such a stylish and swinging sinister sack that you completely forget that he serves no purpose, really. And that's A-OK, -okay, honestly. This movie didn't really need a villain anyway, but the one we got is a hell of a lot of fun. The side characters are all fun to watch, like the two-faced mayor of Halloween Town, Santa Claus himself, who has quite a hot temper in this version, 
Dr. Finkelstein, Sally's creator who's incredibly gullible, and all the rest of the townsfolk are quite a delight in spite of their fright ending appearances. You see what I did there? Alright, we're off to a great start, so why don't I elaborate on what makes this movie good? Well, even though this movie is from 1993, the stop motion still holds up incredibly well, for the most part. The designs of everything are so memorable and well-made that you never even once get the feeling that these characters only exist on a soundstage. Speaking of sound, HOLY PISS THAT MOTHERFUCKING SOUNDTRACK! You know how at Christmas time they play a whole bunch of obnoxious Christmas songs on repeat at every retailer and mall? Why don't they play the damn score for this movie during Halloween? These songs are Halloween, and I doubt I know a single person who can't sing me the entirety of This Is Halloween. Every song is memorable, catchy as shit, and has a quiet brilliance behind them. Not necessarily lyrically, but in other ways, especially when paired with the amazing set designs. The whole movie has this subtle progression to it that doesn't rely on cheap tricks to keep you invested like the other movies I reviewed this month, but it draws you in with genuinely good writing, great characters, and an overall design that is the definitive animated Tim Burton experience. Though this movie is quite whimsically macabre, just like the other Burton movies I've talked about, this one wears that oddly proportioned coat much more comfortably than Corpse Bride and Frankenweenie, in that it takes the concept of something scary, like Halloween and all the creepy and gross things it represents in our modern interpretation of it, and makes it seem more humanized, like being scary and disgusting is just how these people live their lives, much like the Venture Brothers, where being a supervillain is more of a humdrum activity than an odd occurrence, and I will always praise that type of world building, as long as it's done right. But really, what it all boils down to is that this movie brings the best out in all involved, and it really does show. It's a bastion for Halloween lovers, a charming journey for children, an enthralling escape for adults, and a great addition to the repertoire of a musical lover. It does not disappoint on any account. Now, from the way I'm verbally humping this movie like a cat in heat, you would think that I have nothing bad to say about it, right? Well, yeah, you are, but there are a couple little things I want to point out. The very first line in the movie says this. "'Twas a long time ago, longer now than it seems, in a place that perhaps you've seen in your dreams." But during the climax, the world appears to be around present day. What kind of long, long ago is that? Secondly, I wish there was a bit more focus on the actual Halloween aspect of the movie. What I mean by that is, we never really hear about Jack's previous exploits as the Pumpkin King, or how the townsfolk celebrated past Halloweens, or how maybe the world beyond the realm of the holidays reacts to Halloween, and how it affects the inhabitants of Halloween Town. I don't know if this is considered nitpicking or not, but you'll have to forgive me. I just think, for a movie with such focus on creating a spooky, Halloween-y world, they sure don't have a lot of Halloween in it. Despite those very minor nicks in the paint, The Nightmare Before Christmas is a beautiful, brilliant, and bombastic beast that only becomes more captivating and memorable every time you watch it. It's a spooky piece of cinema with a hell of a lot of heart, and it can please anyone at Christmas, Halloween, or really, any time of the year. I give The Nightmare Before Christmas. Four and a half eyes out of five. So... The Nightmare Before Christmas. Is it watchable? Well, well, have you listened to a word I've said all day? Is it enjoyable? What the- seriously, do you need your ears examined or something? Is it memorable? Well, it stands to be one of the only Halloween movies that I can think of that puts its head above the swamp of mediocrity, and it certainly left an impact on people's hearts, as well as their wallets. Anyway, thank you all for tuning in to my Saul's Spooky Halloween. I hope you had a lot of fun, and don't forget, next week will be a series review. Yeah, I think I need a bit of a rest, actually. I think I did a little bit too much of those history powers. I'm starting to get a headache. You know, I... Ugh. I, um, I, uh, so, <laughs> let's try that again. Want to stay up to date with the latest Eye of Saul news? You can follow me on Facebook as well as Twitter at facebook.com slash eye of Saul and twitter.com slash eye of Saul 299. I try to update them as much as I can. And I always post updates at least once a day, so give him a follow, a like, whatever, if you want to see what's going on. Hey everybody, thanks for watching Saul's Spooky Halloween. It's been a lot of fun, it's my favorite month of the year, so it's been great bringing you these spooky stop-motion CG movies here.
If you want to see the previous All Spooky Halloween episodes, you can click the links playing in the video right now. Or if you want to check out my various social media platforms, you can see the links there in the description as well as on the screen there for you. If you have an idea for an animated series or movie you want me to comment on, you can leave me a message in the YouTube comments on any one of my social media platforms, or just let me know in any way you can think of to let me know what you want to see and I will add it to my list. Alright, thanks again for watching Saul's Spooky Halloween and I will see you next week for a series review.